Yo, good evening. Welcome to another Raider Nation Unlimited. I'm your man, Wasted Talent. And to be quite honest with you, I have one of the goats in Raider Nation. I have one of the uh, the tastemakers, one of the, the greatest minds in Raider Nation, man. This is a, a man that I've been waiting to work with, you know what I mean? So I could cross another guy that I respect in this game off the bucket list of people that I want to share the screen with, man. Guys, without further ado, I have to introduce you to the illustrious and praiseworthy Murph. Hey, appreciate you. Up, appreciate, appreciate the kind words, man. Very, very flattering. Thank you very much. But I am. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad to be here. Uh, you know, we got a chance to meet each other face to face at the draft and chop it up a little bit uh, when you guys were doing your your Mount Shieldmore broadcast. And so uh, glad to be here tonight. And, and uh, yeah, talk to you with a little one on one about the Raiders, man. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, listen, 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 you know, you know we're going to go to the Raiders. Raiders. The, the main, main thing, thing that, that is, is on everybody's, everybody's heart heart is, is Eric, Eric Carr going to the Saints. Saints. What do you, what do you think, think about that? Shout, Shout out to everybody, to everybody in here. here. Yeah, appreciate everybody that's in in the, in the chat room tonight. And I can never read the comments, but I always love to go back and read back through them, man. So, so, so definitely appreciate everybody that's in there. Um, Yes, I, I mean, it, it makes sense to me. Um, you know, I, I thought the NFC South for a little while now, that once we kind of knew that Derek was going to move on and not be a part of the Raiders, it kind of lines up. Like, you get, even Carolina or Tampa makes sense as well. It's a um, it's a relatively easy division. You can win it with a losing record. Um, they're warm weather cities, which we know Derek, you know, is accustomed to. Um, I think his faith and values line up a lot with what goes on in the South. Um, I think there's a lot of symmetry there um, for Derek in a lot of different ways. And, you know, it's, it'd probably be a good fit for him. And, and you know, and, and, I, and I wish him the, the, the best. I don't subscribe to the idea of like, oh, I want to see him go win a Super Bowl. No, because if he's winning one, then the Raiders aren't. Yeah, so yeah, I don't yeah. push it that far. But I don't have any ill will to, to Derek Carr. But I, I'll tell you, I've traded a lot of paint with people on Twitter these past couple of weeks, man, because it's like, you know, some of the, I'll just, the card nerds or whatever are just out there fast and furious, man. It's crazy out there. Um, but, yeah, I think it'd be a good fit for him. And so I wish him... You know, if, if that's the case and we get a third round pick in, in return for him, good for him. Go get a fresh start. Go get a fresh start in a different conference. And uh, and then we'll, we'll uh, you know, we'll figure out what we're going to do with that third round pick. Yeah, man, I'm yeah, going to be honest, honest with, you. with you. I really, I really don't, don't want to see, see Derek, Derek Carr, Carr win, anything. win anything. Unless he's unless a silver, he's a silver and black. black. Amen. I, you, I, you know, that's, that's just how I've always, always been. been. And, and I, I also feel, feel that, that him going, going to the NFC South, is, is really, really the best, the best case, case scenario, scenario for him. He'd, he'd be the, be best, the best quarterback, quarterback in the division, division just like, just like that. that. Murph, Murph, I, I, I think it's an echo, echo man. man. The people, the people in the, in the, the chat are saying it's an echo, echo man. Is it, is it me? me? I don't know. I don't have an echo on my end, but... Wait, uh, wait. Wait, wait. Hold on, hold on. Hold on. Is that, that me? me? <laughs> <laughs> what, what the heck is going on here? Yeah, yeah, we got an echo, man. Okay, let me see if I can figure something out on my side. How's that? Is that there still? I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, it yeah, is it still there. I don't know how it's still there. I hit the extra crazy. cancellation button on StreamYard. Maybe that helped. Yeah, yeah. No, I did, too. I, you guys, I, I am screwing up this this momentous occasion. <laughs> yeah, no. I mean, I don't hear it anymore. Now, hey, you guys still hear it? We're good to go, baby. Okay, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now, yeah, so, look, man. The, the, w w there have been some reports that he's meeting with the Saints. Uh, to be honest with you, we knew last night, you know, and, uh, you know, I had confirmation last night and I really didn't want to really touch on it. So I had, you know, proof. I'm not trying to be some insider that leaks news or, you know, leak information or something like that. But to be quite honest with you, um, I don't know what I feel about this, man, because I'm starting to feel like if Derek Carr is not totally on board with what's going on, He's going to screw the Raiders and we're not going to get anything for him. So mm -hmm. if if he's happy about being down there and they're willing to give up even a third round pick, I'm OK with that kind of draft compensation, man. I mean, yeah. I, I don't know about you, man, but I know I'm all right with it. I, I, I'd, I'd be OK with a half eaten sandwich for Derek Carr at this point, man, because I don't feel like we have any real leverage with him. I totally agree, man. I, and we don't have any leverage. And look, we got what well, we're down to, what, seven days, eight days, whatever it is before he's going to get cut from the team anyway so i think the raiders are looking at like anything they get that like they literally have dead inventory right now and so it's like well 
it's not going to make it. You're not going to make any money sitting there on the shelf, man. So you might as well sell it for what you can, what you can get. And so if, yeah, if it's a third round pick or, or any form of compensation, I think it's better than what they're looking at come February 15th, because like, he got, he's gone. Like he gone. Yeah. Oh, well, I mean, might as well get something out of it. And, you know, frankly, it, it makes more sense for him. You know, he's, he wants to keep that bag. Like he's got a big yeah. contract that, yes, that stays intact that he can obviously rework when he gets to his new place. But I mean, that $40 million bag that he's got attached to this contract, he's probably not going to get that in free agency openly. I mean, God bless him if he does, but, I mean, I don't see anybody willing to scratch a check for $40 million for Derek Carr. Like, I'm, think about him what you will. I mean, so, anyway, uh, you know, not even 2016 Derek Carr. I mean, that's a lot of money of what, yes, what he sir. do. So, uh, I, I definitely think that he's got – there's definitely, you know, skin in the game for him. Uh, to to have a trade be made um and you know and i don't i don't and i've heard some from some folks too saying like well what does he owe the raiders like he doesn't know him any favors no he doesn't know him any favors they made a business decision and now he has to make a business decision but i don't think he's going to try to screw the raiders either i think that he's going to do what's best for Derek carr if that screws the screws the raiders somehow in the process then fine, but I don't think he's not going to do anything with the intent to get back at them by any means. He's just going to do what's best for him and his family. Yeah, that's facts, man. I mean, look, my mother used to always say, don't cut off your nose to spite your face, right? And as currently constituted, I I, I, I really believe that the Saints situation would be the best scenario for him. He's in a division where he's the best quarterback in a division day one. He has a, a great defense on the other side of the football. He has Alvin Kamara. If you can get Michael Thomas right, you got Michael Thomas, you got Chris Olave. The offensive line isn't bad. He's in a really good situation. He has a, a, a coach that believes in him and likes him because that's the coach that drafted him. Right. Right? And also, if he restructures his deal, it would be more advantageous for him financially because there's only $7.5 million of his um, 2024 salary that's guaranteed. Mm -hmm. The rest of it's all this year. So yep. he really doesn't have a lot of guarantees going forward with the current con contract. So the way I'm looking at it is this, man. Listen, take them, half-eaten sandwich. We got to look at Derek Carr with a markdown <laughs> sticker like it's freaking the Christmas shop right at two weeks after Christmas. I, I, it's just funny to me. I, when you said, you know, Derek Carr doesn't have any more value, he'd be sitting on the shelf. I just thought about him having a markdown sticker on the front of his forehead. I don't know what that is. <laughs> He's now at the, at the Raider image. They just got a big old Clarence sticker on him. Man, you know what though? The the, the funny thing is, if, if you're a young Raider fan and and you've been you're about 20 years old, he's all you've ever known. So they really they don't they almost never have to 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 mark his jersey down. He'll always be viewed favorably unless he goes to like the 49ers or something like that. Oh. I think he has a spec like and, and even to me, man. Like, look, I'm not a Kardashian, but I'm a guy who. I, you know, when he came here, man, I thought he was the one. I was at his first game in Giant Stadium against the Jets. I remember him, you know, to me, winning the job in Seattle in that third preseason game. I remember that. And him throwing all them touchdowns against, you know, the then, you know, freshly off of the Super Bowls, um, Seattle Seahawks. I, I remember how well he played in, in New York as a rookie and how he kept getting better. And then the next year, I thought Derek was the one. I said, we finally drafted our guy. Finally. And that's the thing that hurts the most about all of this stuff that's been going on. That's why we all keep talking about it, because as yeah. much as we all want to move on from it. Even if you think it was time to move on from Derek, and I did, I was one of the guys who was who's pounding the table to move on, because Murph, we're, we're men of a certain age. We remember what great quarterback play looks like. And I think a lot of the younger guys don't really know exactly what that looks like. We do. You know what I'm saying? And once yeah. I start seeing it going south, man, I wasn't willing to just sit there and just watch it, right? But I don't have any hate towards him, and I and and, and I wish him the best. I just don't wish him to win the Super Bowl before we do. I'm sorry. Yeah, amen. And, I, and I'm with you. And not to, you know, it's it's funny, you know, being at a, a, a like what was it? Wendy Williams says of a particular age, right? Well, so yeah. when you're of a particular age, you got a particular turn of calendar, uh, and uh, you know, yeah, we've seen this team do a lot you know we've seen rich gannon win, a, win an mvp we saw you know jim plunkett win two super bowls we saw kenny although i was a little guy yeah. i remember kenny stabler being a raider and i remember kenny stabler in the sea of hands game and winning games falling down and then doing getting the ball into the end zone at all costs 
there's literally names or plays named after the Raiders and their willingness to to push the rules and to to bend the rules in order to get the ball in the dang end zone from the holy roller to I mean you name it like that that was what that's what defined the Raiders and then before that you got Daryl LaMonica who was literally doing things in the the late 60s that players are just now catching up to doing you know Daryl LaMonica to Warren Wells when you watch what Daryl LaMonica did back in the day like he's literally shooting the ball downfield 60 yards in the air, hitting Warren Wells in stride. People talk about all the big arms of today's NFL, Josh Allen and of course Patrick Mahomes and everybody. But Daryl LaMonica was the first guy to ever do that. And so when you when you have that as your reference point, and then fast forward to recent history, I'm with you. And I thought Derek was the guy too. I mean, he came out and he was basically on the ascent until that 2016 season. And then something happened in 2017 in Washington and it seemingly has fallen apart ever since then. And so yes. that's five years ago, guys. So like at the, so at what point is enough enough? And you just got to make a business decision. It has nothing to do with undervaluing his contribution to the team during the time in which he did. It's not about like, you know, like you said, cutting off your nose despite your face. It's not about like throwing away his legacy or what he did in silver and black. That will always be respected. Once a Raider, always a Raider is not lost on me. But between now or whenever he gets cut or traded, between now and his retirement date, he plays for another team that's not the Raiders. And I have one favorite football team, and I root for one group of yes. players, and that's the ones in silver and black. The shield is above all else. Then when he retires, he can come back to Allegiant Stadium, light the damn torch, and I'll stand up and clap for him. But until Amen. Then, Amen. You know, that's it, you know? A freaking man. Now, moving on, we've all been talking about it. We've all been speculating about it. Touchdown a Buddha himself, Aaron Rodgers, has said that he's going on some darkness retreat. I don't know, a vision quest to make a decision about – his career, how plausible do you feel like it is for us to actually bring him home, man? Like, how 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 plausible do you think it is? Because, man, it, it almost makes too much sense to happen, right? And 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 I don't want to put all my eggs in the Aaron Rodgers basket, but it's kind of looking like it's Aaron Rodgers a bust at this point. Yeah, I mean, you know, well, I got a couple thoughts on that. So first off, uh, although I said I don't root for players outside of uh, silver and black, there is something about Aaron Rodgers that I've always appreciated a lot about his game. And I think that, you know, even if we're not fans of another player, uh, there are certain th things about different players in different uniforms we can appreciate about their game. Uh, and, you know, and Aaron being, uh, he's from the same part of California I'm from, um, you know, or close to it anyways. I'm a Bay Area guy. And um, so I've really enjoyed watching Aaron play quarterback over the years. I think that when you look at not, he's not, I don't think he's the best quarterback in recent history, but I think it's hard to find a better passer, maybe until you get to now Mahomes. But in terms of just passing talent, off schedule throws, you know, impro improvisation, like the guy is freaking money. Like Aaron Rodgers is phenomenal. So to take a player like that who's won a Super Bowl, he's got an MVP, and to put him in silver and black and have him take us out for another couple of years or three years, I think, I mean, I don't know how you could be against it. It's Aaron freaking Rodgers. So um, the feasibility, though, you know, he was on the Pat McAfee show this week and they, they were asking him about it and they were leaning into him about the Raiders and, you know, because he had all the Raider fans hitting him up at the Pro-Am and all this stuff this past week. And so he kind of asked him point blank about it. Aaron said, well, right now I'm under contract with the Packers. So it's going to be, there's going to have to be a lot of reworking going on. The Packers got to be willing to take on his dead money. They got to get enough in return and compensation to make it worth their while. You know, Aaron Rodgers, when you look at it, he'll actually be cheaper if we do pull this off, then what Derek Carr would, would have cost us this year. Yes, so, sir. I mean, it makes all the sense in the world. I'm with you. But now all that said, if we have to mortgage too much of our future to get him, then I don't think it's worth it. I mean, is it worth a, a one in Waller or something to that effect? Maybe then that's, I think that's in the realm, but if they want two number ones and some other competition, like, I don't know, man, that's a lot of, that's a lot of, especially after what we did to give up to get Devonte. So I think that's a long way to go. And I, I kind of, I'm a kind of a fan now. The more that I've, I've thought about it this off season, and the way that the NFL is structured with rookie contracts, and the ways that teams are able to take advantage of those rookie deals, build defenses around young players, and next thing you know, you got Jalen Hurts in the Super Bowl. Next yeah. thing you know, you got Joe Burrow in the Super nice. Bowl. Next thing you know, you know Patrick Mahomes won his Super Bowl in a rookie contract. There's there's a long history now of teams building up around young quarterbacks. 
So there's a there's a real world strategy that could come into play for NFL teams that says you just start drafting quarterbacks in the first round until you hit one. And then once you do, you build up around them, play that four or five year window and load them up with a bunch of good players around them and try to go out and win it all. And, you know, so I, I so while I think if Aaron doesn't come through, I'm more of a fan of us just going all in with a evil weather. I don't care who it is. CJ Stroud could be Hendon Hooker, who I really like, but I know I love Hendon Hooker. He's awesome, man. He's awesome. And I, and I know he'll fall probably to the second, even third round. He's going to fall to the third because of that catastrophic knee injury. He Absolutely. Had. And, and, and his age. He's a little long in the tooth. He's about he 24. He'll be 25 shortly after the draft. So, yeah, he'll, yeah. I, I think he's a third rounder. And so there you go. And so if we pick up a third rounder for Derek Carr, well, then there you go. Then it's Hendon Hooker and Jarrett Stidham and are your, are your quarterbacks for next year. So I, I think there's a lot of opportunities for us. And I know it's people have said like the quarterback depth will be better next year. Yeah. But I mean, will it, and how, will we have enough draft capital to go up there and to get somebody, um, you know, like, was it Williams out of USC is going to yeah, see. And, that, and that's the thing, Murph. I don't want to be bad enough to take, Right. Caleb Williams. I don't yeah. want to be that yeah. bad, right? He's going to be the number one pick. And to be quite honest with you, and I know there are a lot of USC fans in here, shout out to everybody in the chat. Guys, listen, I normally read all of the supers and stuff, and I will, and I normally read all of the, the, the you know, the comments, but when Murph is in the place to be, you got to let Murph cook. <laughs> you got to let Murph cook. You know what I'm saying? So pretty soon we'll get into that. But I talk we, a lot. That's why I have a podcast. No, nah, yeah, we we yo listen, man. I get it out of too, my brother. But <laughs> but this this is the thing. The one thing about Caleb Williams, and I'm gonna say this: Caleb Williams is a bit of a shitbird to me, Murph. I it's something about that kid, him painting the fingernails with all of this and all this talking trash. I don't like it. I'm gonna be honest with you. I I like that from my defensive back, from my wide receiver, from my running back, from my linebacker. I don't like that from the guy that's supposed to be the CEO of the football team. Yeah. I like my quarterbacks to be CEO kind of quarterbacks, right? I mean, I, I know that sounds really mad. Like, I like my quarterbacks to wear their hat to the front, not to the back. <laughs> just, that, that, that's just me, bro. But but look, man, when you talk about the Aaron Rodgers caveat, right, either which way you slice it, whether you get Aaron Rodgers or whether you get a quarterback this year, right, unless you're, you can live with Hendon Hooker being the future, most likely – you'd have to give up more draft capital than just what we have at number seven to get up to a place where you would draft a guy like a C.J. Stroud. Now, C.J. Stroud is a clean prospect, right? Hinton Hooker is not so clean, he fall. And I don't think that you can sell Devontae Adams on Hinton Hooker and Jared Stidham. I just don't. I'm okay. going to be honest with you. Okay. I really don't. And, and Devontae Adams really essentially only has two years left here. And I don't want to lose one of – Prob one one of the best quarterbacks, man. And the quarterbacks, I'm sorry, man. One of the one of the best wide receivers, man, of this generation, if not the best wide receiver of this generation. You know, we haven't had a lot of guys that have been Hall of Fame level talents in, in, in the Raiders in the last 20 years, man. And having a man like this play for this team and possibly retiring here means a lot to me, man. It means a lot to the shield. It means a lot to, you know the image of this this organization i don't want us to look like this dumpster fire i want us to be what we used to be where we had a whole locker room and a mess full of, of hall of fame players man and and i just i want to do whatever we can to pacify Devonte adams because i feel bad for Devonte. he came here he wants to win he grew up a raider fan this is the best case scenario for him and his family tax-free state it's hot it's close to where he grew up at his grandparents go watch him play and, 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 and still, he has a love for this team. And that's the thing about it, man. This is a man who, who made a sacrifice to come here, and I want to see it be paid off. Yeah, I, I agree with that 100%. I thought it was really refreshing to hear that that uh, Devontae is going to have input into who the next quarterback is. Because, I, I mean, you're right. Like, uh, no one, no one's opinion is more valuable when it comes to who the next quarterback is going to be than freaking Devontae Adams. And so – um, I think it's I think it's a big deal, and I think that he's going to be genuinely consulted in it. I don't think that that's rhetoric, uh, and I think that he's going to have a hand in it. And I and I was really um, thankful to hear Devonte also say that he would be open to a rookie quarterback like C.J. Stroud. That he is he understands that he, that there are options for the Raiders, and that he would endorse multiple ones. He's not taking a hard line and saying, "Okay, it's got to be this guy." You know, he's saying, yeah. "Okay, I, I would love to have this guy." 
But if it's not this guy, then all right, this guy's pretty good too. Or maybe even this guy over here. So like, I love that idea that he's part of the conversation. And frankly, he should be. And I've always been surprised at why players weren't consulted more heavily in who they want to have in the building. To give you an example, right? Like Aaron Rodgers bitched about that, about the Packers not involving him in any personnel decision and highly criticized them to the point where he was ready to leave. They had worked out all their feelings and all that. And what did he say? Well, then go get me Randall Cobb. And what they yeah. do, they went and got him Randall Cobb and Randall Cobb had a resurgence. Like, yeah. go figure. Like, That's a fact. That's you know a what fact. I mean? Like, so uh, why, why not give Devo help, let Devontae pick who his quarterback's going to be? I think it's a great idea. See, this is the difference, though. I think that in Green Bay, that team is not owned by an actual owner. It's it, it's almost like a, like a corporation. Like it's like right. a straw man, yeah. like a straw man that owns the Packers. So I think everything that they do is financially motivated because they have to be. It's yeah. not like with other organizations where you have a man at the top that could say, you know what? I don't care what it costs. I want a winner. Do what that guy says. Like say for instance, like the Rams, the Stan Kroenke. I want a winner. I got to pack the stadium. It's Los Angeles. People aren't coming to the stadium if we're losing. Do whatever the hell you got to do to win, but you better win, right? There's a difference between that and what the Packers got going on. So I think that's why. And I'm glad that the Raiders and Mark Davis thinks with the left side of his brain, right? And within that, there are a lot of contracts that need to be ratified. There's a lot of holes that need to be filled. And Aaron Rodgers is not going to be the, the cure-all for the Raiders. But I do think that if we definitely – I think if we have, like, a better quarterback – to, so to speak, and better quarterback play and better execution. If you look at some of the games we lost this year, man, we lost a lot of these games. We lost like four or five games by less than 12 points. I think if you have a guy, you don't even have Aaron Rod have to have Aaron Rodgers under center. You could have had Jalen Hurts under center for the Raiders this year. I think that oh. we would probably be a, 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 a freaking two-loss football team. That's how well we played this year. The only two games I could see us clearly getting our ass kicked was the Saint game. And and probably you probably lose the, the the second game to the Chiefs, and that yeah. was it. Every other game we were in, if you had better execution, you win that game. So to be quite honest with you, I don't think the Raiders are as far off as everyone far off as everyone thinks. I think what needs to happen is I think we need to fill in the defense at every level of the defense with a bona fide starter, bona fide starter. Now if we do that, and then we draft well. You go out there, get an Aaron Rodgers and or Hennon Hooker and or C.J. Stroud. Just an upgrade at quarterback as far as mistake-free football. I think that this team is going to make some noise next year. I'm with you, man. You know, in the NFL, like it's it's like every, every other sport, they say it's a game of inches, right? But when you look at like how close the wins are and how close the losses are and really what defines a team season is that who just closes it out you like look at the lions last year they weren't able to close those games out early but then they started to come together as a, as a team and really started coming at like closing those games out and the latter part of the season and ended up with a pretty successful season where they were in the playoff hunt like so if the raiders just close up a few of those i'm with you like you know we saw them in, in, in the tennessee game uh had had a chance to uh, to win it and had some unfortunate turnovers with balls bouncing off Darren waller's hand uh, with with the game in, in Seattle, obviously, and, and I don't want to pick on Derek, but he didn't have his best game, uh, or, you know, against Pittsburgh, and 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 cost us, you know, a, a pretty big win uh, in that game. But I'm with you. So there are a, there are a lot of games, and and I'll just say this, and again, I, I really try not to pick on Derek, but listen, let's just it's the elephant in the room right now. You know hey, I pick on him all the time. Don't okay. worry about him. I mean, but here, uh, <laughs> right. I mean, here's the thing. Like, I know the defense struggled at times. But the defense also made a lot of plays and created a lot of turnovers for us this year. A and lot. I think that when we look at stats, whether we look at whether it's the offensive side of the ball or the defensive side of the ball, it's really important to consider the context. Okay, the context is, all right, if you throw an interception in the red zone, it shows up as an interception. Well, you could throw 24 touchdowns uh, on the course of the year, and that, and that, but that interception is only going to be an interception. It doesn't tell you that it was in the red zone and there was a 14-point swing because the team turned around and ran it down the, the opposite end of the field and scored. It doesn't tell you the context. It doesn't tell you the context. When Max Crosby gets a sack, it shows up as a sack on the stat sheet. But what it doesn't tell you is it was on a third down, it was on a third and seven, and the Raiders had the lead. Or, you know what I'm saying? Like, you have to understand the context. And within context, the Raiders' defense did some things. Within context, the offensive line did some things. We saw both those entities improve 
towards the end of the year. So all those things considered, those red zone opportunities where we were not getting the ball into the end zone, you can blame play calling, and that's fair. I get it. But I think that if, if you don't assign at least partial blame to quarterback, you're really look, you're, you're being blind to it. Like you got to consider the idea that the ball needs to get in the God dang end zone. And so, uh, and again, I'm picking at him, but when he, uh, his recent time with the Raiders to me was defined by the last series against the Bengals last year in the playoffs, we had four downs inside the 10 yard line. We had a spike. We had an overthrow. We had one out of the end zone and one short of the end zone that we got picked off. Like, Come on, like it's like, come on, Murph. No, like, look, I mean, like, like what? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, it, it, look, I'm gonna be honest with you. There are a lot of people who have who have platforms, right? Whether it be, may be the newspaper, whether it may be YouTube, right? People who are on the car side of the argument sometimes play that role because it's more lucrative for them to do that. Nah. And, and I'm going to be honest with you. When you take the road less travel, sometimes that road comes with turns. It comes with pitfalls. But see, for me, it's not about that. It's all about me. And listen, sometimes I'm wrong. I have no problem admitting that I'm wrong about something. I have zero problem admitting I'm wrong about something. But I always speak from how I'm feeling at the moment based off of the information that's in front of me. I don't, I don't just shoot from the hip. I don't speak from a place where I don't know or but I'm never going to get on here and say something that I don't feel just because it's going to move the needle in a positive way. And I, I think the car thing has been something to where a lot of people feel like they were going to lose their audience if they went out against them. And a lot of people have grown their audience by lauding Derek Carr and saying that no matter what happened, it's somebody's fault. Like Derek Carr could 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 slip and they'd be like, oh, man, you know, that fucking ground. It's way, way too hard, man. You know, you know, it, it could be anything. They, you know, you know, I mean, Derek Carr threw the interception, but did you see the way the laces on that football was constructed? I mean, it's all the football's fault. It's bullshit, bro. And I'm never gonna sit up here and do that, bro. I am never, ever, ever gonna sit up here and do that. Ever. You know, but well, it's like at some point the excuses have to run out. And I think that's in it. And listen, and this isn't this you it's we're talking about Derek Carr here, so it's it, it pertinent to him. But I would I would venture that you and I would agree that it goes with every player. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I, I loved – I didn't love the pick when it happened, but when Cleve Farrell became a Raider, man, you couldn't find a bigger fan of his than me. I was rooting for that young man. We heard about how much he loved football. We heard about how dedicated he was. We heard about what a great character guy he was. All those things. It was like, all right, cool. Let's sell that. Now go ball out. Go prove everybody wrong. Well, but at some point, the guy that you drafted to play defensive end and get sacks, and the guy's not getting sacks, and he's not even getting pressures, and he's just pretty good against the run. Well, that's not what we drafted you for. So yeah, the excuse was run out. Derek Carr had a long runway, and he got paid a lot of money. Like, ain't nobody did him wrong. No one backstabbed him. He was compensated fairly, and the Raiders made a business decision, and now it's time to move on because the excuses ran out, and they run out for everyone. The NFL is the ultimate meritocracy, and, the, and, the, and in a meritocracy, there's only two things that count. How many numbers you put in one column versus how many numbers you put in the other, and that's wins and effing losses, man. Yes, the sir. End. Yes, sir. The yes, end. sir. And I, I'll never forget Tony Romo said the same thing when Dak Prescott overtook him. I'll never forget it. He said the NFL is the ultimate meritocracy, bro. And he said that you know I'm okay with what happened because he's been playing well. There's no way they could put me back in, and he retired. And 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 I heard Charles Woodson speak on the same thing about DC, but. When we talk about play, we talk about guys who played terrible this year. Let's talk about one gentleman on this football team who played out of his freaking mind. And that man's name is Josh Jacobs. Yes. Brother, the Raiders have a, 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 a real tough decision to make because if the Raiders franchise Josh Jacobs, which a lot of people are thinking, if, 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 if you – Franchise him under the exclusive tag. I think it's sixteen million, and if you do the non-exclusive tag, it's ten million. Could be wrong, but Josh Jacobs does not look like he is willing to play under the franchise tag. Do you see any scenario where he gets a contract that he feels he deserves, and we keep him, and we avoid the shenanigans of holding out and all of this other shit? 
I man, I hope so because I'm with you. It, 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 it's good thing we have a player like Josh Jacobs who we can unanimously all root for. It's nice that we have a handful of those guys, you know, in the uh, in, in silver and black. You know, Perryman's like that, Max Crosby's like that, like guys that that everyone loves. Um, because it's not a 50 50 like it is on on some of the others. Um, so yeah, I think Josh Jacobs, I mean, it's really, I think the Raiders have a lot of egg on their face and really lose a serious competitive advantage by not doing everything they possibly can to get him um back in silver and black. Uh, I don't know if he's going to command that 15 or 16 million dollar contract. Um, and, and first off, I acknowledge it, and I'm totally with you on the, the franchise tags. And, and those numbers are the same numbers I, I read, 16 and 10, and, and he's going to be pissed off if he gets either of them. Like, he's clearly said that. So even if he doesn't hold out, he's you know, is there still going to be something in the back of his mind that he just didn't like by, by getting that franchise tag? And, oh, yeah, the Raiders can do it two, two in a row if they really wanted to. Um, but anyways, but I, don't, I would hope they don't do that. But anyways, but that kind of money, so if you give him a contract for 15 a year, well, that's – Zeke Elliott, that's Derrick Henry, that's yeah. like up there with those you know kind of guys. Then you got like a notch down. We got like Dalvin Cook, Alvin Kamara, like the guys like that. I could see that being more where Josh lands. You could give him an incentive laden contract that only impacts the salary cap, twelve or thirteen million bucks, uh, and then you know give him a nice big signing bonus things that aren't going to mortgage the future of the salary cap. Because, like, and I always say this, too, like, when we're talking about this stuff, like, I don't begrudge anybody for making all the damn money they can. Like, yeah, me neither. Money, it ain't my business at all. My only investment is what does it do to the Raiders' competitive advantage and or ability? That's what's most important to me. That's all I care about. So the only reason I care about, well, should he get 16 or should he get 13? Well, because that's $3 million more million that the Raiders have to spend somewhere else. So that's the only reason I care about this stuff. Um, but anyways, so point being, could they get him for that? I think there's a real-world scenario where you could get it. And even if you just look at a simple fact that, like, all right, if you go to a state like, I don't know, pick one, you know, California. Um, New York, California, New York, whatever. You're going to pay a lot of taxes. Well, guess what? There ain't no taxes in Nevada, so there's a certain amount of money, and I don't know what the exact breakdown is. I'm not a CPA, but I don't know what the exact breakdown of dollars actually saved on a $13 million versus a $16 million contract in a state. I think, yeah, I, I, like, yeah. just ballpark, because I'm pretty good at math. Okay. You, you're saving probably about, like, $2 million in salary a year. So there you go. So he's actually only netting like an extra mil if he goes to somewhere in New York versus staying in Vegas with the difference between 16 and 13. So I think that's a really feasible scenario. And then and the last I'll say on that is this, especially if they're going to go any kind of a rookie quarterback route, because yeah. that's one of the huge advantages of having a rookie yes. quarterback is you got, a, you got a, you know, inexpensive contracts. And what's better for a rookie quarterback than – a good defense, a good tight end, and a good running back. So yeah. you're not going to let him get out and depend on maybe Zeus White to carry it through the season, although I'm a big fan of Zeus White, but yeah. he's unproven at this point where Josh Jacobs is not. So I think that there's there's an affordable way for the team to get it done, and I, I hope they do. See, the thing, my, my thing is, is this. I just don't want the contract. You mentioned the, the, the running back that I'm going to talk about to be an Ezekiel Elliott situation where his contract becomes an albatross in the future if he gets injured. Now, we all know that Josh has been a little injury prone, a little dinged up. He had his best year, you know, and I'm going to be honest with you, man. He is a guy that at the beginning of this season, I was saying, hey, hey man, you might have to move on from Josh Jacobs. You can't pay a running back like that. And now he's going from that, in my mind, to being invaluable. And now it's like, man, I can't see this organization allowing that man to walk out of the door based off of what he just did this season and based off of us letting Derek Carr leave. If you let him and Derek Carr leave in the same season, we better damn near go to the fucking Super Bowl. Real rap, Murray. Right? We, yeah. we better damn yeah. near go to the Super Bowl, bro, because the nation will be out and forced with pitchforks and all kinds of <laughs> all kinds of farming equipment flames and it, it, it'd be good to be an angry mob the likes of which we've never seen i'm telling you bro they they have to make sure even if it doesn't make the best financial sense that they bring josh jacobs back they have to they have to i'm with you there's no way you let your quarterback and your, and your starting quarterback and your starting running back get out get out of the building i mean 
it was bad enough when we let Khalil Mack get out of the building, right? Oh, that, my God. Oh, you know, my God. Bro. Like, he, he buy, and I get and like, and I go back to like at the time, like it made sense to me because at the time I'm like, well, the compensation and what they would have had to pay Khalil and it's like all that kind of. But then they didn't do shit with the draft picks. And so it was a completely wasted the, the scenario there by by letting him get out the door. But like, you know, you mentioned like we haven't had a Hall of Famer in 20 years. Well, we had one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and number fifty-two, and and, and, that, and that's the thing, bro. Yeah. And, the, and the fact that he might not ever be in silver and black again, and the fact that the lion's share of his career now is not going to be spent here; it's going to be spent elsewhere. Yeah. Now, now that is a problem for me, bro. And 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 Agreed. look, with Khalil Mack, I, full disclosure, bro. When Khalil Mack got traded, bro, I I don't think I got over that for about four or five months. I still have three mm-hmm. Khalil Mack jerseys. I love Khalil Mack. I played linebacker. I am a linebacker at heart. You know what I'm saying? I love Khalil Mack. He's my favorite player that we've had since Charles Woodson. And it's it's just, it, it really pisses me off that he's still not a Raider. I If I had to make that decision, I would have kept Khalil Mack and I got rid of Derek. I'm not going to lie. And I know everybody at the time is like, well, you know, the quarterback, you got to keep the quarterback. I'm like, this quarterback's okay. I don't think he's that great. Let's go out and get another one. And I wouldn't have brought John Gruden back, but that's me, right? But be that as it may. I'm with you. Hey, I'm with you. That was one that, like, that of of my adult. Now, when I was a kid, when Al traded away Kenny Stabler, that was the most devastating loss of a player to me ever. Um, and which also, too, which feeds the, the, the comments that we get about, oh, the Raiders did Carr wrong. Y'all acting brand new, man. We've been <laughs> like, I, see, it's a difference. Thing. They're not. They don't know any better. They don't know. We've been. Al Davis was the most ruthless son of a bitch that you ever met, and he would. He literally called Phil Villapiano on the phone to ask him about Bob Chandler. And when Phil Villapiano said, "Yeah, what are you asking him about Bob for?" And he said, "Because I just traded you for him." Like, <laughs> you know I mean? like oh no! I'm, I'm telling you, like you guys, like it's it, no one was done wrong. Like this is just this is what happens. It's a business. But anyways. But when when Kenny left, that that hurt. And when and when Marcus left, like that one hurt bad. Oh. And there's been other players uh, through time too that like I even remember like when Jared Valdir left, that was a bummer. When Namdi left, that was a bummer. But Khalil Mack, that one stung, man. I'm with you, and I'm with you. And it took me that long to kind of get over it too. And I was like, it took me a long time because I'm not as old as you, Murph. I'm 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 a little younger than you. Nobody I, is. Look, look. <laughs> no one. Listen. No one around here is. <laughs> look, man. The Mark Marcus Allen was the fr- Marcus Allen. Well, before that, Bo getting hurt, I was crushed. I was devastated. Mm-hmm. Bo, I was devastated when Bo got hurt, right? Because when Bo got hurt, I thought that because I remember that year we played Cincinnati the last week of the season, and we played them in the playoffs that next that next week. And Bo got hurt the last game of the season on the sideline, and I thought it was just nothing. I thought, ah, it's Bo. He'd be all right. Then he didn't play the next week. And Nick uh, was Nick Bell. I, I was younger, man. Nick, uh, no, Nick 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 Bell wasn't there yet, right? Was, gosh, was Nick Bell there? I don't remember. I don't even remember. But when Bo wasn't playing, somebody else was playing running back, and he and that, Al man. still wasn't really playing Marcus then either because he had that vendetta. He, Marcus didn't really run that much in that game. I was like, what the fuck is going on here? Why didn't they play Marcus? Be that as it may, I thought Bo was going to come back. And when Bo never came back, I was devastated, man. He was hurt. And then after that, Marcus Allen leaving when they started free agency. What was that, 91 or 92 when free agency started? I think it was 92, and that's why I, I, I got the media guide from 92. Yeah, I'm going to yeah. look that up, see if I can find who that other running back was. Because it was 92, because I remember, like, Reggie White and Marcus Allen, all they were, like, the yeah, first Reggie, free agents. That was the first that Re- Reggie, that was the big one when he went to Green Bay. Yeah, that was, that was, the, fir- that was the first round of free agents, man. And after that, Bro, Marcus Allen killing us for the next for, for the foreseeable future on the Kansas City Chiefs used to sting. And it just kept rolling and rolling and rolling, bro. But the Khalil Mack thing bothered me, man, because look, when I was a kid, the first Super Bowl I really remember was, was the 84 Super Bowl. You know what I mean? The 83, 84 Super Bowl. So I don't remember Marcus Allen being drafted. I'm too young for that, right? But I remember Khalil Mack being drafted. And I remember Charles Wilson being drafted. And those two guys. That really hurt. I remember I remember when Timmy was drafted, too. But Timmy had his full career. You know what I mean? So when he went to try yeah. to get him a ring in Tampa Bay, I was okay with that. But, but man. And, and, he, and, and he that's was a shell of himself at that point. So it wasn't yeah, like, and, you know, and, like and we knew. Yeah. But it's just, dude, I, I'm going to be honest with you, man. 
I am to the point where I don't want to hear any more excuses anymore. I want them to go out there. I want them to draft well. And I want us to develop a real culture here, man. So I'm with, you know, and we had, um, we went to the, the Bolitnikoff Foundation dinner this past December where we, we our foundation, the shirt I'm wearing, our One Nation Foundation presents a check to the Bolitnikoff Foundation at the end of every year. And um, and so we, we were out there to do that. And we had the good fortune, and it's amazing, of, of the opportunity to interview legends of the of the game fred bolitnikoff uh you know we were greg townsend marcus was there we got a we got signatures on a football of all three super bowl mvps awesome um, we talked to shooter McGa- like it was and i'm not trying to name drop i'm just trying to no drop, hey man brother please draw context to this so we had and just drop them oh, <laughs> please <laughs> drop them like bricks man <laughs> told me to never be a name dropper so um but uh, so we had to, uh, during this time we're doing all these interviews one of the guys that came through was wayne mabry who is there is in terms of super fans, there are it's one and one A. It's Guerrero, I love, I love Unk, man, and freaking Violator. That's it, the end. And so Wayne is just a phenomenal human being, and and, and I know you've probably uh, have you had him on the show before. No, I haven't had him on the show, but I met him in person a few times. Okay. Ex- excellent guy. So he yo, he's the most positive guy. Talk to him in the inbox. Everything great. For, just one of the. the the salt of the earth, man. Absolutely, such a good man. And and so he sat in with us, and and he, what he said uh, really resonated with all of us, with with all of us, uh, uh, our Raiders fan radio crew. He said, "You never lower the standard for the shield. It doesn't matter anything else that's going on. It's that is the standard. Al Davis's standard is win a championship. The end." You never lower the standard for anything else. It ain't about winning a division. It ain't about going one and zero every week. It ain't about well, maybe we'll make a deep run. No, we're gonna win a goddamn championship every single year. That's the standard, and you never lower the standard. And like, and I'm paraphrasing, but like, but Wayne, but those are powerful words, and I think that Sorry. it's important for us as fans to remember that that beautiful night black sunday in tampa when marcus allen was running with the night and we literally you know blew out the redskins a defeat in the words of john facenda of which no honor could be salvaged that's the raiders that's what we do that's we right. not only beat you we beat the shit out of you and we step on your can i swear on the show Come on, man. You step on your fucking neck on our way off the field, man. You know what I mean? You know what? I got to steal this from Graphic. Talk that shit, Murph. I got to steal that from Graphic. Oh, my God, man. That's the that's Raider Nation. That's the Raider way. Al Davis created the Raiders and built the Raiders with a mystique that he wanted the opposing team's fans and the opposing team to be afraid to play us. You wanted them to be afraid when they drove into the Oakland Coliseum on the bus. They wanted them to be scared of the Raiders because what happens when you do that? Your mind is somewhere else. You're He's playing a game within the game. If you're thinking about somebody's, oh, this guy might be cheating or the field might be wet or they might be putting helium in the footballs or they might be freaking writing dirty messages on the football or cutting off the power to the locker room. When you're thinking about that shit, you're not thinking about playing cornerback. You're not he thinking about playing cheating, running back. He ain't trying, baby. That's it. And I that's- love it. And when, when, I, when I think about that, his son, the illustrious and praiseworthy Mark Davis, man, have you what have you heard about what was going on with the with the uh the the, the Aces, the Aces basketball team, man? I you know, I used to always wonder if Mark had any of his old man in him. <laughs> and I'm gonna be honest with you, you know, I I at first I was like, man, little Al, I don't know if he's gonna cut it at first. And then some of the moves he's made like getting his team to Las Vegas was a Raider ass move. Some of the stuff that he's done in the last few years, I'm getting, I'm gaining respect for Mark. And the one thing that I, that I have respect for Mark for is the fact that he knows what he knows and he knows what he doesn't. And when he doesn't know, he tries to hire the best. Now, if the best doesn't get it done, then he moves on. But I give him a lot of credit for at least staying in his lane on the business end of football. And on the business end of football, He's impeccable. But the one thing that I want to see from Mark is that ruthlessness. And I think this offseason is the year where he's made his ascension to being a ruthless scumbag owner that I want being the owner of the Raiders. I've heard that Mark Davis has been attempting to find ways to like kind of circumvent the the WNBA's collective bargaining agreement. I didn't even understand if they even had one. I'm going to be honest with you, not to be chauvinistic. But, you know, that league doesn't make a whole hell of a lot of money, man. He tries to provide 
other ways to support his players because they don't make shit. And he's gotten himself in a little trouble, man. And I'm wondering, it's two things, man. I I I, I don't you want me to go into the minutiae of what happened, bro? Real quick, unless yeah, you I don't know if you're familiar. caught up on it. Yeah. All right. So guys, if you're not caught up on the audience, um uh, the reigning champion Las Vegas Aces are under investigation for making under the table payments to both current players and free agents. The team has pursued, and the Aces have already chose, you know, they're, they're pretty close to the one point. Damn, their cap is $1.4 million. Oh, my God. They don't make anything. Man. They don't make anything. With all five starters rolled and in, entering the free agency. So they're doing some things to where they can get these guys paid outside of the collective bargaining agreement, and people are looking into it now. Uh, during the pandemic, they had rules about chartering flights. And what Mark was doing was to keep the players socially distanced. He bought out the middle of the plane so that they can fly. And, you know, so Mark is with the shit with getting his players on in the WNB team money. Do you think this is something that's going to affect him owning the Raiders? Do you think that the league is going to start fucking with Mark? Because to me, it's always seemed like he's like the redheaded stepchild in the NFL. They don't want him owning that team at all. Yeah, I agree with that. I'm, you know, I don't know. I mean, the NFL has been pretty petty around the Raiders for many, many years. And so, you know, unfortunately, all that ruthless gangstery shit that Al Davis used to do uh, brought a legacy with him and a, and a certain feeling towards him and the Raiders uh, from the from the NFL and a lot of the other NFL owners. And uh, there are still some old school ownership, uh, you know, the good old boys club and the in the Raider or excuse me, in the in the NFL that that kind of has a case of the ass for the Raiders. And so it wouldn't surprise me. Uh, I don't know what amount of leverage they would have at this point to actually do anything because it's a <clears throat> completely outside of, of, of the NFL. It's not like it's a gambling thing or something like that. So I don't know what kind of leverage they would have, but I got to tell you, man, and, and, and you and I were kind of laughing about it when, before we got started, I like it. Like, I love it. That's 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 what Al Davis would have done. He would have pushed the envelope. He would have found, and that's what Raiders do. You sometimes you push your toes over the edge a little bit, and you go too far until someone tells you to knock it off. And then you might back up and try something else. But like, I like it that. And here's the other thing too about Mark Davis, and I think this is a that a, a really interesting point that uh, hopefully doesn't get lost on on folks. He's doing this for his players. What was what is every Raider ever? Speaking about Al Davis, it's Mr. Davis or it's Coach Davis, and they speak about him with reverence. Every single one of them, even the ones that didn't get along with him that great. They all speak about him with reverence because they respected him. And as Al Davis famously said, right? Well, he actually, he said better to be feared than respected. But anyways, but point being, though, is that like Al Davis knew or the players knew that Al Davis had their back. That's what Mark Davis is doing for these for these ladies. That you're right; they don't make a lot of money. The league doesn't make any money. It's subsidized by the NBA. There's no money out there for these things. So for him to you know do this to go out on a limb for his players to you know push the envelope, pay them under the table, that's some gangstery shit. So I kind of like it, and and I, I love hope, it too. It's on hope, brand. Yeah, and I hope that he does that. You know. Mark gets a lot of shit for where he eats, what he drives, how he wears his hair, what kind of clothes he wears. He gets a lot of shit for that. But don't forget, he's still Al Davis's kid, and he doesn't like to be embarrassed. And there's a reason that Jack Del Rio got fired to the point where he had to go to the podium and announce his own firing because of the bullshit what was going on with Crabtree on the sideline and the body language blown out in, in San Diego. He didn't like that, it, it, and so he got rid of him. So there's still some of that rolling around in Mark Davis. The last thing I'll say is this, and I really do also want to highlight the comment that you made. I have a lot of respect for people that know what they don't know. Like, you know, especially now today's world with Twitter and shit, just because you got an iPhone and some thumbs, everybody's got like an opinion now on something. Well, guess what? Some of you didn't go to medical school. Some of you didn't go through law school. Some of you don't own an NFL franchise. Like, you know what I mean? And I'm speaking to myself too. We don't know about a lot of this stuff because we've never done it. Mark Davis knows he doesn't know football. So he brings in football people to do football things. He brings in people to run the organization for him, like Sandra Douglas Morgan. Like he knows that like his role is to be the owner. Think about Bob Kraft. Bob Kraft is an owner of the Patriots. He sure. hires everybody else to do all the other shit for him. That's yeah. what that is. So I think it's wonderful that he brings in the, the people that has he always made the best hires? 
I don't know. That's yeah. debatable. But at least he knows that, like, okay, I'm not going to be the GM. I'm not going to pull a Jerry Jones. I'm going to bring in Reggie McKenzie to run the football team. Yes, sir. I think that's a very, very important thing that, that Mark does not get nearly enough credit for. See, the, the thing that I do, I think that Mark does do well is he knows how to be the, the CEO. He knows dollar cost average. I, I'll never forget when Reggie first got here. Reggie had a propensity for drafting injured players and bringing in guys who had injuries and trying to salvage them, right? I.e. DJ Hayden and Gary on Connolly had some issues and things like that. And I remember when he was going to bring in Roger Saffold. You remember that? Yeah. Mark vetoed it. Now, yeah. was it was it the wrong move? Roger Saffo has played very, very well. Not very, very well, but he's been the starter. Pretty he hasn't good. really been yeah. injured. It's been pretty good. But the contract that Reggie McKenzie was going to give a guy who was perennially injury prone was egregious. And Mark stepped in and said, hell no. And from that day forward, I gained a lot of respect for Mark. And, and sometimes the owner has to do that. Sometimes the owner has to come out up from Mount Olympus and tell you, hey, don't trade Tom Brady. He still can play. You know what I mean? Then you win two more Super Bowls because of it. <laughs> right? Robert Kraft did yeah, that with Bill Belichick. Right. Now, sometimes I, I don't mind an owner that comes out every now and again and says, ah, 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 no. And I think Mark is that kind of owner. I think we have to allow him to mature into that, Ben. We, too much too much is made of, oh, he's a dumpster fire. Well, look, let's, 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 let's make no mistake about it. Everybody who watches my show knows I feel this way. This team was a dumpster fire when Mark inherited from his old man. Let's yeah. be for real here. Yeah. And his dad did him no favors financially. Mark and the Davis family do not come from old money like some of these other owners where they could shit out $2 billion and, and did not affect them. Mark Davis had to salvage this team financially before he did anything. Because if you're not financially solvent, you can't win. You can't win, bro. There's no possible way you can win unless you have a situation where you have money to be able to compete and to sign free agents. You remember, it was so many years where we wanted to go out there and try to sign. it will be all these great free agents and Raider Nation would be like, we should go get this guy. We should go get that guy. And I would be thinking, dude, we can't afford that guy. There's no way we're going to be able to get the money for this guy because there's no way we can afford to pay that guy what he's going to work. I, you know, the first guy that comes to mind I could think of was in when Indomitica Sue left Detroit. And everybody's like, he'd be the perfect Raider and all this and that. And I knew that we would have got outbid. There was no way we were going to be able to do that. Yeah, I, I agree. And it's, it's you know, he did inherit a, a shit show. I mean, Al, Dave, you know, Al was a master at the salary cap. But ultimately, his, at the, at the latter part of his life, this isn't talking smack about Al at all. But as he knew, he his health was declining. He knew his years were short. And he freaking went all in on a lot of different players that he probably shouldn't have gone all in on. When you think about like Javon Walker and like, you know yeah. what I mean? There was a lot of guys. I wasn't in his right state of being. It wasn't, it wasn't the Al of the seventies and eighties and even, even the nineties. And so, you know, yeah, Mark Davis inherited a mess and Mark Davis did a phenomenal job of, you know, look, the city of Oakland and the Bay area as a whole we won't, I don't want to get into California politics, but as somebody that, that grew up there, and I don't live there anymore, but as somebody that grew up and lived there for the majority of my life at one point, um, it's it's there's a lot of red tape, and there's a lot of bureaucracy, and there's a lot of politics, and yes, just the EPA alone, it's nearly impossible to get something built. So there's a reason that all three major sports franchises that resided in the city of Oakland are gone. Like we could, well, and the A's aren't technically gone yet, but, yeah, they're, but they're, they're leaving. They're coming. They're coming, coming, to, they're coming to Henderson, man. And yeah. everybody knows Libby Shaft is not the easiest person to get along yeah. with. Yeah, and so he had to navigate through all of those waters, then navigate through the thing with was which, and I'm glad that this didn't happen. That stupid joint stadium idea with the Chargers that was a that would have been a mess. But now, but then he 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 pulls off the deal in Vegas, and the Raiders now are, and I don't know what the exact numbers are. I haven't seen him in a hot minute. But when you look at the value of the franchise now versus what it was when it was in Oakland, it's it's crazy how much value the Raiders have now. So when it comes to that part of what Mark Davis has done, he's incredibly successful. He's probably the most successful owner of recent history in doing that. Now, yes, I know sir. that doesn't, hasn't translated yet to on field, but just like Wasted said, like you can't get to that without having health and success in the organization. And once upon a time, we were the one of the most dysfunctional organizations in all of football, if not all of sports. And we're no longer that anymore. 
You can laugh at our performance on the field, but you can't laugh at our front office. Yes, you, you damn sure can. not I'm going to say this really quickly, too. Jack Kenner, uh, Mark did an amazing job getting to raise a new stadium, but took two steps back and kicking out the Raiders fan with a sign we deserve better. Now, see, the thing about that is we don't know the whole story behind that. I don't really like to th – this is me. Until I know the full context behind what happened, I don't like to judge what happened. If that's what happened, because I don't know that to be true, that's wrong, right? But then also you got to understand sometimes when you put derogatory signs up, right, you don't know who you're sitting next to. You don't know what TV executive is there because this is a business. And the thing is, people do not have to let you patronize their business if you're not being respectful to the people around. Now, do we know it was just him holding a sign up or was he being belligerent? There are a lot of different caveats to this because, listen, all the time when you talk about social media, YouTube, all of this stuff, people could take a little clip and pervert that clip and make you believe whatever they want. Man, but man. then when you see the whole clip, then it turns into another story. I see it happen all the time. So for me, if that's what happened, that's the wrong way to go about it. But if it's not, you got to kind of get the full context behind what happened. If he was being belligerent to fans around him or cursing, or if they came to him nicely and told him, hey, man, look, we, you know, we want you to put that down and he cussed them out or whatever, then that's something different. I don't know. But e either which way, man, I'm I'm all about whatever you do, you got to do it with a certain markum of respect, especially mm -hmm. when you're talking about a billion dollar corporation and a billion dollar business. You got to do it with a certain margin of respect. Now, when we talk about Mark Davis and all the little trivial things that are going on, all of this shit gets kind of canceled out if we start winning. And, and, and before we go, Murph. Amen. Amen. And Murph, I appreciate you for being here. Man, it, 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 it's, it's been a beautiful, beautiful episode i appreciate you for you're yeah. always welcome on my platform my brother i want you to speak about the one nation foundation ah thank you and, and 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 you know where people can go to support i'm gonna lend my support to the one nation foundation i'm gonna be shouting it out every day and uh just let them know a little bit about what that's about man oh that's very, very kind and thank you for for giving me the platform here on your show and yeah and first and foremost i've had a blast tonight this has been great man like uh, it's, it's fun chopping it up with you man and uh and all you mount shieldmore guys are fantastic but i Appreciate really you, but, man. really Appreciate enjoy our conversation um so yeah so the one nation foundation so we figured out so i we i host a podcast called raiders fan radio with my best friends uh michelle and swag jeff and a few years ago we realized that we could make money with raiders fan radio and uh, we decided that um, we wanted to give all that money away and and uh that that's not a disparaging you know comment towards anybody that makes money with their platform because that's i think is amazing as well um but we're between the three of us we decided in my uncle mosh we decided we were going to give all the money away so we formed our own nonprofit called the one nation foundation and every dollar that's raised with Raiders fan radio uh, and other things gets all fed into the, to the foundation. And we support strictly Raiders related charities. And the most important one I'd like to tell you about is the Bolitnikoff foundation. Um, for those of you that don't know, Fred Bolitnikoff for Super Bowl MVP from our first Super Bowl, you know, the hall of fame wide receiver, his daughter was taken from us too early in 1999 uh, due to domestic violence. And so, the Bolitnikoff Foundation funds a place called Tracy's Place of Hope. And what it does is it brings in young women who are at risk of substance abuse and domestic violence. And not only does it give them a safe place, but it offers them rehabilitative services before they go back out into the world again. It's an absolutely wonderful organization. And that's where our money goes. So um, if, if you feel the, you know, that you want to donate, you can go to onenationfoundation.net. And there's a donate button. You can give money directly to us there. Um, but any of our merchandise sales, any of that kind of stuff, all the money goes to the foundation. And if you and if you can't contribute monetarily, all we ask is for a like, a subscribe, a retweet, any of that kind of stuff that helps promote the message. Because with the promoted message, we get increased advertising dollars from sponsors. And the, that money then will feed the, the, the organization and the foundation as well. So Beautiful. we just ask for your support. It ain't about getting clicks and not, ain't about that for us. It's just about drawing attention to our foundation. That's what reason I'm wearing a One Nation Foundation shirt, not a Raiders fan radio shirt. That it's the Raiders fan radio supports our foundation and we want to lift that up and raise as much money as we can to give to, to folks like Bolitnikov. But we also gave to um, Allison King, Kenny King's mom, when, when she was having her cancer battle. We also gave to... Um, 
Shout out to Kenny King, too. Shout out to Kenny King, absolutely. Um, the Stabler XOXO Foundation, which funds research for concussions and CTE. We've given to them. We've given to numerous charities um, over, over the, the few years we've been doing this. And so thank you again for the platform. I know I talk a lot, so nah, I'll show up. Nah, Murph, you the man. Much, I appreciate it. Murph, you class up every joint you come into, my brother. And I'm going to be honest with you. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that I highlight it. I put it on my community tab. I wasn't prepared. I don't have the link right now. If you have it, you know, I, I, I can you put it in the chat? I don't think you can. No. But if, if, if you if you if if you you could put it in a private chat, I'll post it in here. Everybody, please okay. support Murph, support Raider Fan Radio, support the Politnikov Foundation, the One Nation Foundation, bro. And and before and, and, and in conclusion, two things. Thank you very much. Like I said before, you class to join up. You're one of the best guests we've ever had on Raider Nation Unlimited. And also one day we have to get swaggy on here because swag jeff is the goat this man in fantasy football drafted all raiders and won he actually won a game swag jeff is the goat he's a legend <laughs> of mammoth proportions he, he, is, he, is, he is a legend man swaggy's my guy man so he, he refused to draft anybody except a raider <laughs> let me tell you bro that was, guys, listen, that is the One Nation Foundation.net. It's right down there. Get with it and get lost. Y'all already know, guys. I'm sorry I wasn't really reading the comments, man. But when you got Murph in a place to be, like they say, like that bum Russell Wilson says, let's let Russ cook. You no, know, we have a real <laughs> chef in here. Let Murph cook. Y'all, this has been a great episode. I love and appreciate every single one of y'all. We are out like yesterday. Peace out. And in conclusion, like I always say, and I know I need another drop, but I'm old and I don't care. Yesterday's price is not today's price. I get out of here. Have a good night. Peace. <laughs>